there was something called the Barbesca root, which uh, in the 1930s was discovered in Mexico. And the woman in the jungle were collecting this particular root and chewing on it. And it actually happens that they would have achieved a reasonable form of contraception because the Barbesca root is the origin of the major progestin, the uh, synthetic progesterone, which started off the first birth control modern pill. Of all the yams that they could have eaten, how did they come to choose this one and then identify with the fact that some three, four months later or so, they never fell pregnant? But the technology that we're coming through in the late 20th and 21st century is remarkable. This technique, it's the progestin is incorporated into this vaginal ring and inserted in the vagina and the mode of action is identical in preventing the development of the egg. The need for a long-acting form of uh, contraception was put into an injectable. And so uh, an injection of products like this would give the woman two, three months now of protection. Very important, especially in the developing countries. This little thin package here is available where it's like perforated stamps. There's some 21 little perforations on the rice paper and it incorporates the same hormones that we have in the pill. She simply takes one of these little squares puts it on her tongue, it's rice paper, it dissolves, and she has an effective technique right there. A long-acting technique is a subdermal implant in various shapes under the skin, and it's effective sometimes from two to five years. And a very recent innovation is the patch. Instead of taking a tablet a day, she merely places this on various parts of her body and it gives her a full week effective contraception. And looking into the future, uh, the technology of an item like this, which is not on the market, but to be able to have it as a nasal spray and allow it this way to get into the bloodstream that much faster and that much uh, more effectively. So we've come a long way from lead and mercury but there's a still a great need, I believe, for ongoing research, for lower doses and more interesting technologies to reduce the cost and make it more convenient for the user.